first of all, guys, I'll just welcome everybody and, and introduce everybody. My name is Martin McGrath, and I work as a HR manager in employment equality in the Belfast Trust. And I've worked for the Belfast Trust from 2002. Um, with me today here, we have uh, Gavin Boyd, um, who is the policy and advocacy manager from the Rainbow Project, and we'll hear from Gavin shortly. And we've also two colleagues that work um, within the Belfast Trust also. So we've got uh, Mel Douglas, who is the Employee Industrial Relations Manager in Human Resources, and Martin McKeever, who is a social worker in learning disability. So uh, the reason for this uh, webinar today is um, this year in the Belfast Trust, we're really excited to be uh, able to participate in the annual Pride celebrations. Um, the 2020 event will actually be held virtually, um, but we hope to develop it further for next year's Pride. Um, in Belfast and enjoy our journey going forward in partnership with our uh, stakeholders and colleagues from within the LGBTQ plus community. At the Trust, we aim to take forward a programme of work over the next 12 months that will assist us as an employer in becoming a more inclusive um, with the LGBTQ communities and we aim to participate um, hopefully this year um, in the NHS UK wide rainbow badge initiative that allows staff to get training uh, to become uh, a point of contact for staff and service users who may wish to seek advice and guidance or discuss areas around the LGBTQ uh, uh, sort of quota as such. Um, we aim to co-produce guidance for LGBTQ staff um, in partnership with trade unions and external stakeholders such as the Rainbow Project and Transgender NI. Um, we'll invite LGBT staff to make contact also with the LGBT Forum, which is run through the PHA, um, and we've got a, a, a website that will be available throughout uh, Pride Week as such that uh, will direct staff to that. And of course, we want to ask staff also to complete all uh, that you do your mandatory equality training, good relations and human rights, um, making a difference. You can do that online and it's something you have to do once every five years. Um, so that will give staff a general good insight to the LGBT, LGBT uh, field as such as well. So today we're delighted to have uh, Gavin Boyd, um, as I said, he's the Policy and Advocacy Manager for the Rainbow Project. So Gavin, do you want to give us a wee bit of an insight to yourself, please? Sure. So um, I've been with uh, Rainbow for um, over 10 years now. Um, first started out working on an education project and, and now leading kind of on the, the general policy and advocacy for the organisation. The, the biggest part of my job is to find ways of understanding what the experiences of the LGBTQ population in Northern Ireland is um, so that we can help government, employers, public authorities better meet the needs of the LGBTQ people that they work with and those that they serve as well. Um, so I have just a wee um, PowerPoint presentation to, to share with you all about just kind of, kind of um, some of the stats, some of the themes that we have seen coming up over our time of working with employers and some of the things that we can do um, that can make employment um, uh, more accessible for, for LGBTQ plus people. Um, so should be able to see that. Yeah. Awesome. So um, let me know if you want to interrupt it or, you know, make a point or a question at any time here, folks. Yep. Um, that'd be really helpful. So uh, a number of years ago, we did a piece of research for the what was the Department of Employment and Learning to find out what the experiences of LGBT workers in Northern Ireland were. Um, and um, so the things that are important are whether or not people are out to their colleagues and work. So we find that only about 41 percent of the LGBTQ population were out to colleagues in their workplace. Um, and we might think, why, why is it important for people to be out in the workplace? And, and surely if they don't want to be out, then they shouldn't have to be. And that's exactly true. It's, it's always up to us whether or not we want to be out uh, in our workplace and, and to what degree. Um, but if you don't feel able to be out in the workplace, that can be a really significant barrier to your ability to participate fully in the workplace, um, even to, to focus on, on doing your job. If you're constantly worried about this, Sometimes what people might feel as being like a dirty little secret is being found out about them. That can be a really distracting thing. You know, if you're out to some people and not out to others, you always have to be thinking in your mind as to who knows this bit of information about you and who doesn't. If I put such and such a thing up on Facebook, is that going to be going to be out me to someone that I'm not ready to be out to? Um, 
And so the more of us that feel able to be out in every aspect of our lives, the less we have to worry about what other people's perceptions of that has to be. Um, we also found out that uh, by 29% of people were out to their manager in work. And so again, you can understand that not being out to your manager in the workplace is a barrier to your uh, ability to report any issues that you're having uh, in your employment with other colleagues. Um, and and you know you need to be able to be out to your manager so that you're not having to come out to them as being a significant part of your reporting uh, an issue that you're having with a colleague or, or in your employment. Um, we find that about 31% of LGBTQ workers don't know anyone else um, in their workplace who is LGBTQ. Um, and that can be an isolating experience. You know, no one likes to be the only person of anything uh, in any large group of people. And it can be, again, just that isolating experience of feeling like you're the only person from a particular population um, and, and sometimes really large uh, employment. We find that about 21% of LGBTQ plus people believe that their sexual orientation or gender identity would have a negative impact on their career progression. Um, and we find that about 26% of LGBTQ workers have heard negative comments about LGBTQ people from work colleagues. And the bigger problem with that is that if you're not out in the workplace, uh, you're more likely to hear negative comments uh, from others than if you are out. And obviously, if you're not out and you hear negative comments, it makes it harder for you to make that decision to come out to people as well. So kind of themes um, that we see as being barriers to LGBTQ people in, in employment um, are fears and experiences of hostility, um, either uh, from colleagues, from managers, from other people, from, from service users or clients who will hear interacting with the organization. Um, the barriers to reporting, so if you're not out to your, your line manager, that can be a barrier to your reporting. If you've um, reported something in the past and haven't felt like it was dealt with appropriately, that can be a barrier to your reporting something further in the future because you maybe already feel uh, a, a lack of confidence in the system. Um, oftentimes, LGBTQ people feel like they have to negotiate other people's biases. Um, so saying or doing things in such a way as to not offend others, um, that can lead to people doing things like not talking about their partners, not talking about their holiday plans, um, not talking about any issues that they have in their employment because they feel that they have to negotiate around other people's uh, sense of what's acceptable to talk about and what isn't. Um, being out in different settings, um, someone could be out to their, their close colleagues and the immediate team of people that they work with but maybe not in a wider network of colleagues within the same organization. Um, and that can be just, a, again, a stressful worry to think about, am I going to say or do something? Is someone else going to say or do something that's going to make me feel vulnerable uh, or exposed in a way that I wasn't expecting to be? For a lot of trans uh, and non-binary people, um, or even just gender non-conforming people, it can be frustrating and exhausting to be continually correcting people um, on names or pronouns. Um, and I think there's often a fear there that that um, you know uh, people are taking maybe an easy way out, out of of just choosing not to learn some new information about a colleague that they've maybe known for a while, or not taking the time that it takes to to get to know someone that they've just met, um, and appreciate the way in which they like to be referred. And again, for for trans non-binary people, um, access to to facilities in the workplace can be a barrier as well, or or certainly the fear of of being challenged on access to the facilities, whether that's changing rooms, toilets, um, any other kind of facilities where, where people use, that can be just, a, again, a stressful thing to, to feel like you have to negotiate around other people to be able to, 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 um, to just continue to do your job. Um, there's some really important points around like language um, for LGBTQ people ourselves and, and for the people who work with us. Um, and for people who aren't LGBTQ, um, the language of sexual orientation um, can seem confusing or overwhelming. There are a lot of words out there. Some of them are, are really long words uh, and people can get confused about which words are the right things to use. Um, for non-LGBTQ people, um, sometimes they have a fear of saying or doing um, the right thing. And then because of their lack of confidence, that can lead to issues going unaddressed. So if you don't really have a, a good sense of confidence in understanding gender, trans issues, the reasons why people prefer different, you know, use different pronouns or, or use different names. It can be really difficult for you to challenge someone else 
on 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 their continued use of a wrong name or continued use of wrong pronouns because you don't feel solid in your own understanding of it, um, and that can you know limit your ability to to do the things that you need to do for your colleagues. Um, for LGBTQ people uh, ourselves, it can be frustrating. To continually have to explain explain terms or acronyms, um, which we use, um, although we've tend to have done our own self education on these issues and they become second nature to us, um, and so it can be frustrating when people uh, don't go through that same that same process of of learning and, and educating themselves. Um, it can be really helpful for employers to create glossaries uh, or language guides on LGBTQ issues so that employees have a resource. They can use and that can build their knowledge and their confidence um, and so they have something to refer back to as well so some things that we are we think are, are, are really helpful um, to create lgbt inclusive uh, environments and workplaces um, is around thinking about the actual workplace the places where we work the physical spaces is there posters or literature or materials that can communicate to lgbtq people and others um, about the, the value of LGBTQ people, the, 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 the importance of equality and diversity in the workplaces. Um, are we using like gender neutral language or not making assumptions around people, their, their gender, their relationships? Um, and are we being affirming? And affirming is a, a, a really important value, I think, for anyone who's engaging on LGBT issues because um, you know, there's a, a lot of kind of uh, merit, I, I think, put into the word tolerance, but I don't actually think it's a very um helpful term um, and certainly it's not a term that we would ever use when thinking about uh minority sexual orientations or genders um as far as we're concerned tolerance is putting up with a bad smell um and actually it's important to to accept that lgbtq people exist they're good people they contribute positively to the world and it's important for that to be affirmed we think it's really important for employers um, to monitor for sexual orientation and gender identity, both in their employment and in their service delivery. Um, employers should know um, roughly what kind of a percentage of their, their employees are LGBTQ um, so that we can track experiences. We can learn if there are barriers to, to employment, barriers to recruitment, barriers to retention. If all our LGBTQ staff are, are leaving service within you know a short number of years, that means there's a structural problem that can only be resolved uh, with a structural solution. Um, Thinking about the policies of the organization, if they're LGBTQ, LGBTQ inclusive, so think about things like family friendly policies, adoption leave. Um, is there a policy that that's explains to trans staff how they can transition at work? Um, you know, things like a language guide to explain terms and give uh, colleagues scenarios of when to use uh, the right terms. Um, are we you know actively making steps to be a, a recruiter of choice for LGBTQ people and, and is explaining the LGBT inclusive nature of the employment uh, a part of the induction for, for new colleagues who are joining the organization. I think it's really important for organizations to create ways uh, for LGBTQ employees to be heard um, and for their ability to shape policy and practice within an organization, whether through a staff network um, or through trade unions, um, but it should be really important for, for LGBTQ employees to have a sense of, of having a stake in the organization and that they have the ability to affect change. Um, access and training and support, um, and, and you know, especially getting ongoing support from, from Rainbow as well. Um, so that's kind of the things that we think are, are import, important considerations. Um, in employment, the kind of barriers for participation for LGBTQ people um, and, and maybe some strategies as to, to how to um, improve participation and inclusion for LGBTQ people in, in work settings. Thanks very much, Calvin. That's great. Um, great coverage there. Um, so what I would say is a, a lot of those things that you've actually talked about there, we have are in the, in the process of, of putting in place or there are, there are policies and guidelines already in place. Um, we do monitor our workforce across all the Section 75 categories, and I can tell you now that out of the 24,000 staff that we have, there's only under 2% who have actually identified as coming from the LGBTQ uh, community as such. So um, in, in relation to the guidelines that we'll further develop for staff, we'll, we'll look at the gender legislation, um, common LGBTQ myths, facts and reality, understanding gender, um, good practice guidance, um, talk about the language, um, resource for con of contacts. It's going to sort of be like a, a desk 
sort of Bible that people could reach their hand to and, and, and yeah, sort yeah. of refer to as needed. That, that's great. Thanks very much. So I would like to welcome further then into the discussion here today then. I'm delighted to say that we have members of staff from, from the Belfast Trust who have wished to take care. So we've got Martin McKeever, social worker and learned disability in Mayo, um, Douglas, employee industrial relations manager in HR. So as usual, okay, guys, if we ask you a few questions and you can give us a wee bit of an insight to sort of your um, experiences and journey so far with the Belfast Trust. So firstly, maybe go with um, Martin, if that's OK. Um, Martin, if you want to tell us um, how you, you work for the Belfast Trust and have you felt supported throughout your time? So I was thinking about that before we started today, and I am probably one of those people that don't have to come out. Um, it tends to be that people might know or assume my sexuality prior to us having a conversation. And that in general in my life is something I'm very comfortable with. You know, I probably did a lot of personal work to get to a place where that is acceptable, like accepted the parts of my personality and presentation that signal my sexuality and have embraced them. Some of them I probably highlighted it in certain places. Um, and I was thinking about it today. I would never have anticipated working in Northern Ireland and being able to be my authentic self when I was at school or when I was like a young adult. I just was not that not the messages that I heard. That's not my experience. It was a, like a, a hard time for me and to be somewhere that I can be feel I can be authentically myself and work with colleagues from across experiences in Northern Ireland and to feel that I can just be myself is a really remarkable thing, which is really the reason why I wanted to take part today, because I don't think it's universal. I'm not sure everybody has that same experience and I feel very grateful. I do have friends who would talk about who are happy to be out in their workplaces, including within healthcare, and would talk about having to come out regularly and often to different colleagues and to have it confirmed and then to have that conversation. People going, oh, I wouldn't have known or I, why aren't you like this or why can't I? And those conversations are really difficult for people. Um, I haven't had to have them for several many years, but I did not enjoy them when I did. You know, within the Belfast Trust, I suppose I joined the trust when I was about 27, um, and I've been very well supported by my colleagues. But there is also, I think, a risk with that because you're coming into a new workplace and you don't know the structure, you don't know all the managers, you don't know everybody that you work with, and you don't know where they're coming from. So it's it kind of turns on its head then because you start doubting yourself and you start doubting, should I be as open as I am? Is it a place where I can be comfortable? And that can have quite an uh, emotional toll, I think, on people. It can, it can with me on times or if senior management is to change and you think, oh, I'm out in work and I was comfortable before, but am I still OK to be how I am? Is that still a safe way to be? But I haven't, I haven't had any negative experiences within my work, but it's just something that I think is constantly the elephant in the room. I think particularly when you have a service user facing role. So you go out to see families and you worry, you know, I'm presenting a certain way, which I'm happy and comfortable to do. But how will that family respect me? And I'm there usually at a very difficult time for them. But what if there is a difficult dynamic between us? Um, and I have clocked it in work for, but luckily there hasn't been a particular issue. Usually we can focus on the issues in that family, but it is definitely there all the time. But then Northern, in Northern Ireland, I think your your sexuality is not is not yours alone. It's everybody's in that room. I've heard people from uh, LGBT community um, coming coming out and they they have to come out every day in some cases um, and that's a difficult um, situation to be in. Obviously, if you're having to justify who you are every day and, and it's an experience, obviously, that I'm sure nobody would like to have to do. Um, when, when you say, you, you mentioned there before about um, in, in cases where um, you mentioned there that uh, people would assume that you come from the LGBT community. I would uh, always say and say to staff and in particular at the staff training that we deliver that it's wrong to assume on anybody's grounds and what they are just because you present or maybe come across a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that you are that person. So 
it, it is. It's about you feeling comfortable in yourself and, and wanting to express who you are um, in the workplace, obviously. Um, May I, what about yourself? Sorry, go ahead, Martin, you were going to say something. I think that that can be really difficult, though, as well, because as, like, assuming my sexuality might actually be the right thing to do. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's all, it can save me a lot of work. It can save me, <laughs> okay. you know, but assuming it incorrectly yeah. could be very That's difficult for someone else, you know, and that yeah. is a very, that is a, a, a tricky balance for people to negate, you know. For me personally, it works if you take the visual cues that you're seeing and somewhat rule with that. But that's not going to be the case for everyone. Oh, and that, that's that, that's why we, we, we sort of yeah. put that across to say you, you, you try to make it's about stereotyping people and it's wrong to stereotype people sometimes. You know? So it's putting people into those categories just when like you come into a room and you see somebody and because they're wearing this or look like this, that people just automatically assume. So it's trying to get away from those stereotypical um, traits as such. So Mel, what about yourself when working for Belfast Trust? Have you felt supported or did, have you had to come out and work? Um, I joined the Belfast Trust Martin last year in 2019 and I think I made a conscious effort to um, be out at work and just be myself. Um, I suppose um, I probably am not a stereotypical sort of what one would would see as, as, as a lesbian or, or be able to identify in that way so I think for me it was important that I was out at work and people knew who I was and that I did have a wife and I did have a child and that was just who I was and I think that has come from partly being nearly you know turning 40 now and and thinking right I just need to be myself but also for those awkward questions I don't walk around with a trail of rainbows behind me so people do ask questions like oh you've got a son how did that happen um, and have you always been gay? And, you know, those sorts of questions. And I thought, well, do you know, maybe just coming out and saying how it is and being myself was the best way to be. Um, felt 100% supported at work. I've never had anybody, you know, um, ask those awkward questions. And that's good for HR. Um, uh, and it's a real testimony to who we are, which is, which is great. Um, but, you know, I can see why some people wouldn't, especially in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um, so for me, it, it was important to be myself, um, but also I do understand and I think I have a better understanding of why some people wouldn't in our society. Okay, thanks. Um, that, that's brilliant. Um, it, it's good to hear that um, you're, you're taken on board in HR, I think, uh, definitely. Um, what, what could you uh, think in, in sort of your experience, Martin, is there anything that the, the Belfast Trust could have done better for you? I don't know. Um, I suppose there was never maybe a direct conversation, say, with line management or in supervision. Is if is there any support that you need? Is there anything? It would have been a general conversation. Do you know are you getting are you getting on with colleagues? Has there been any difficulties? Maybe the action needed would have been of benefit, given that there was an openness. Um, yeah. Potentially. Uh, as I say, I've had a very good experience. Um, I'm not sure anyone would be taking part in this webinar if they hadn't, I suppose, do you know? Yeah, yeah. well, that's good to know. So I'm thinking about them. Um, what do you think about um, our participation in Pride um, and other initiatives such as Rainbow, um, the, the Rainbow Patch? Do you think that's going to be a positive thing for the Trust going forward? I think those things are vitally important. Do you know, visibility is one of the main things that we need to do here, do you know? You, the trust or any employer needs to be actively saying we are happy to employ support and have LGBT people working for us as part of our services. We want that. We like that. We encourage and support them. We are here if there's any problems. We are a, a friendly place to work because lots of people don't know. They don't know. They, they think they're going to have difficulties or they have had difficulties accessing services, so working for services is going to be difficult for them. And we still lose, like so many of my friends go away to be gay, they yeah. professional people who go and work somewhere else so they can maybe be somewhat invisible or go somewhere that's perceived as being more friendly. And I think in general, we need to be saying that Northern Ireland and Belfast are friendlier places for LGBT people to be now, but we also need to be actively working to make that the case. 
We yeah. can't just say it if it isn't true. Okay, that's great, Gavin. What do you, what do you think? Your views on that there with the participation in um, an organisation the size of the, the Belfast Trust coming in on board with Pride and then also the Rainbow Pin? Have you, I'm sure you're part of the Rainbow Pin initiative, have you? Oh, I yeah, and I think they're great. I think Rainbow Pins are great. I think that lanyards are great. Um, uh, I think all those things that, that raise visibility are, are really great because they 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 communicate to LGBTQ plus staff, um, they communicate to service users, but they, they also kind of set a general uh, climate of what's acceptable and what isn't. And I think that's that's a really helpful, um, like nonverbal signal to, to give. In terms of like participation and pride, I think it's I think it's really really great, really really positive. But I, I also think one of the like one of the benefits of um, Belfast Pride and the way Pride is kind of done specifically in Northern Ireland is that yes, there's parades, parades are super important. Everyone knows in Northern Ireland parades are really important. But I think like the, some of the best stuff that happens in Belfast Pride, like during the festival, is not necessarily the the parade itself. And yeah. I think that what's great about um, being able to participate in, in Pride is that employers should be able to find their own ways of participating in Pride. Yeah. Um, and that can be around you, like doing webinars and creating participation um, during that time. It can be even just having like a coffee morning yeah. um, on site somewhere where people can just have a bit of time um, just to, to you know, be able to, to celebrate Pride without necessarily having to, to do a whole march in, in what is usually rain. Um, <laughs> So I, I think it's it's about finding ways to, to listen to what the workforce wants and needs um, and finding ways to incorporate that into the way that we plan ahead for, for prides in years to come. I mean, I think it's really great um, that that these have been like really positive experiences of, of work in the Belfast Trust. And and, and, and I'm sure for, for the vast majority of LGBTQ plus staff, it is a positive experience. But I think what's what Martin highlights has been a really important point is like, how do we communicate that to people who aren't necessarily in the trust right now? Mm -hmm. So thinking about when we're doing recruitment, um, like, are we uh, is, is there you know, information if I'm you know, thinking about whether or not I should go for work in the Belfast Trust or go across to the Greater Manchester Trust for a job there? Uh, if I think I'm going to have a better life as, as an LGBT person in, in Manchester, should there be something communicating to me in, as part of recruitment? that actually you can do just as good a job and be the same person that you want to be here without having to go to to you know across the water to do that. Um, so I think those are kind of important considerations for it, you know. That's great, thanks. Mel, what about yourself then? Do you think it's uh, it's good to have participation in Pride um, with you sort of just fresh in the door in, into, into the Belfast Trust um, and um, the, the initiative that we plan to go ahead um, we, we have got a, 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 a list of stuff that we hope to sort of launch in the next year, building up to the next Pride. I know that. So there's programs of work and there's going to be chances for, for staff to get involved in that, obviously, and ask for participation in it. So going forward, you, you'll hopefully see more and more coming through. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? No, I think it's a really good idea. Um, I think, I suppose, there's three main aspects of it for me. One is to support our staff that we have who identify as LGBTQ+, um, but also um, to send that message out to, to our staff and our managers out there on what is acceptable and, and how to behave and, and how to treat um, fellow human beings. Um, yeah. And that's with dignity and respect and compassion and all our HSE values. But I also say, think that it is a massive, massive marketing tool for us um, to yeah. go out to try and improve um, our percentages and try to get as many LGBTQ plus staff in um, through our doors who feel comfortable working for us, who see us as an employer of choice, who who want to come and work, um, and also for their family members to know that that you know coming to Belfast Trust is a good place and a good thing and a good step forward. You don't have to go away. You don't have to hide who you are. That we accept you who you are. So um, I think the more things that we can do the better because actually in our climate and in Northern Ireland we really really need to be a voice of inclusivity and equality and tolerance and respect and and all those things that, that we want to be as an employer. That's great so I know um, one of the things that was wanting to look to ask um, you guys as well uh, is in, in your experience and then this can go also um, to yourself because uh, we're all service users of the Belfast Trust so uh, I'm wanting to sort of figure out um, uh, we've all used the health and social care services within the Belfast Trust. Um, 
is there anything that you can think that we can improve inclusivity and um, be more responsive to service provisions? Or is there any examples that you could give or any good, bad experiences that you've had using services within the Belfast Club? I think this is probably, Martin, the place that I would have had issues. Um, right. So obviously I have a child, so any yeah. appointments he goes to, um, there's always questions about his father. Right. Um, and always questions about, you know, your daddy or um, we're even still getting mail addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Right. Um, so that that's been an issue. Um, I think personally as well for me being um, a gay woman, um, you know, you always get these questions when you're going for scans and whatever. Are you pregnant? And, and the question the answer is, no, I'm not. Are you on protection? No, I'm not. And then it's a really awkward question. Well, how, how can you not be, how can you be sure if you're not using protection? Well, actually, because I'm, I'm a gay woman and it's impossible. So, <laughs> you know, so there are those really awkward conversations. So I feel as a patient, I'm constantly coming out. Yeah. I'm constantly having to explain myself as a patient. And um, even if I bring my other half, my wife with me to my appointments, there's like the question of, oh, is this your friend? I've had that before. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's my wife. Oh, right, right, right. OK. And there's okay. that awkwardness all the time. So I think as a service user, there has there is a little bit of work to be done in terms of what a normal family um, makeup is, is, is not what what we're trying to advocate as today's society um it is not a man and a woman and 2.4 children it is a complete mixture of everything and anything and that is perfectly okay and i think those sorts of messages have to go out to, to our um, clinicians and, and to our staff that you know just because it's not obvious um or it's not what you think you know i think you can't have those preconceived ideas on anybody yeah, so that's something then obviously we'll have to to put in place with our, our systems and structures as such to try and, and, and um, sort of iron out uh, different problems like that. Um, I do know that we'll, we, we will probably go forward and, and have different surveys and things like that. So from, we'll hopefully we'll, we'll, there'll be learning in those surveys and then going forward with, with new systems coming in. There'll be the benefit of, um, and the opportunity for um, service users to uh, express um, the, the community backgrounds that come from, um, if they're LGBT or not, their ethnicities and all that, because I think that some of the systems are, are maybe a wee bit predated and old and the information's different. Um, so maybe going forward with new systems, um, things like that will be um, sort of underwritten in, in the agreements that we, we go forward with. And Martin, what about yourself there? Um, have you had any experiences that you'd like to talk about? Thinking about this today and I probably don't use a lot of healthcare. I suppose I'm quite young, um, but not, I just haven't had much reason, but I, the times that I have, it hasn't been a particular barrier, but I did think about it and I did kind of want to highlight maybe as like a positive example, the um, gum clinic that I have attended, which obviously maybe have a particular reason to do so as a gay man with maybe a particular risk associated with my lifestyle. And I've always found it to be very supportive. There can be difficulties with accessing it, it's in high demand and I have had one very bad experience of trying to access the emergency support at night. It was just an absolute tragedy but it had nothing to do with my sexuality, nothing particularly to do with the um, issue that I was there for. It was just that they were incredibly busy and there seemed to be an issue with a number of systems at a &E that particular night but um, I would think in general it's, it's incredibly supportive service that is there i'm not sure that everybody knows yeah. that it's there or how access how to access it or how to use it or the support that's open so i think that maybe that's something else the trust needs to do is yeah. to talk about services that they have that are general but also specific yes with a specific interest it's getting the word out better then really in, yeah. a, in a way is it what about yourself then gavin have you had um, any experiences with it um, well, I, mean, I think um, most of my interactions with the, the trust are, are are very positive. I I agree with with both Mel and, and Martin's points here, and that these are the the key issues that come up through all of our our research with the community as well. Is that for women yeah. in the population, there are issues around fertility and reproductive health care, and the assumptions that are made for them when they're going for their appointments. Also, things like the the lack of information for gay and lesbian women around. Um, particularly like cervical screening and the importance of going for cervical screening and, and just those kind of um, um, 
you know, prophylactic kind of healthcare that we should be going for. Um, for gay men, it's it's always about access to sexual health services. Um, like once you get in the door, Martin's obviously right. The staff, the nurses, the doctors, they know exactly what they're what they're doing. The way they talk to you is great. Um, it's a completely like judgment free service. Um, but it is getting in the door is an absolute nightmare. Um, and if people are stressed or worried about whether or not they've contracted an infection and they're they're trying to get through a phone line for 45 minutes before they head out the door to work, it's just a really, really scary experience. And I think that, um, you know, a, a decent bit of investment into sexual health services to make it more accessible would be would be really, really great. It would be remiss of me not to say uh, about um, improving access to transition healthcare. Um, at Knock Rackin as well, um, and you know, trying to make a, a dent into the into the waiting lists there because that's just a, a long running pro problem. But my experiences, um, and it's it's pretty much through through Gum, have always been very very positive. Okay, um, I do know that um, we mentioned there as well earlier on the visibility in languages um, is, is obviously important. Um, um, we we aim to include all staff irrespective of their sexual orientation. That is something. That we'll try to continue to do going forward. Um, we want to recognise the diversity of the trust workforce. Um, we obviously work in partnership with our trade union colleagues um, and with um, external stakeholders like yourself, Gavin. Um, so it, it's trying to sort of put out the, the message that we are committed to the principle of dignity of the all staff and we want to make sure that everybody's uh, respected. And that includes service users as well, um, it, it, even if they're from the LGBTQ communities. So um, we, you should feel valued, at, um, and particularly the staff who come in and, and deliver a service. And, and, and times gone by, they're a very vital service that, that is close to everybody's hearts now. So we want to make sure that discrimination and harassment does not occur. Um, and we want to make sure that there's the same post for staff um, to make sure that, that, that no, they, there is support there for them. Um, there, there's different um, ways and means of getting that um, information out. And that's something that we would probably have to tighten up on and get better at um, going forward. Um, is there anything else that you just want to add to the discussion today or um, are you happy enough to um, wrap it up? Or I think there's a challenge, Martin, for us as um as people who identify as LGBTQ, that we um, are role models really in our organization, whether we're out or or not, but yeah. in our language and in our behavior and what's acceptable and what's not. Um, and just examples, you know, I refer to, to my other half as my wife. She is my wife, we're married, um, it's legal, it's fine. So taking that cue from me that she's my wife, not that she's my partner or she's my special friend or, hmm. or things like that. So it's, it's being, you know, if you want to be open and you want to be out and you want to be honest about it, it's, it's about making sure that you are behaving and role modeling in, in an appropriate way. And it's everybody's choice. It's not for, for me to say whether you're out or you're not or you're comfortable or you're not, yeah. but making sure that the language that you use and the behaviors you display at work are such that that demand respect and 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 deserve respect too. One hundred percent, I would one hundred percent agree with that, Melanie. Um, I totally agree. Um, uh, it, it's about making sure that we're uh, an employer of choice, um, and some some where anybody from any background can come uh, and uh, seek employment with themselves. Um, so that that's one of the main aims of, of we we need to retain staff in the Belfast Trust. We and that means we we need to retain people in Northern Ireland no matter where they come from or who they are or what they are. So it's a, it's about trying to, to create that model and, and, and making us a, a, a positive place to come and work. Um, so it's a bit of a journey that we'll have to go on, but hopefully it's a positive one. And with guys like yourselves willing to come in on board to do discussions like this and, and Gavin to come in from external organisations and give guidance and support. And Gavin does and has come and done different training sessions with me this year. Um, we were due, due to do a couple more, but, but with the, the whole COVID pandemic, those were hitting the head, um, sort of cancelled for a while. So hopefully going forward in the not too distant future, we'll probably have to do something like this, Gavin, um, and going forward. Um, so uh, so hopefully um, things will start coming better for, for um, or more positive, should I say, for, for, for staff from the LGBTQ community um, and making sure that um, they're involved in, in, in anything that we produce that may, may assist them as a member of staff and as a service user. So happy enough to wrap that up. Is that okay, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you very much.